Joining me now here on the NBA Report, a man that's going to make his UFC debut here at the end of the month because he heads to Fight Island. John Cassidy, John, man, I appreciate the time. Uh, first off, how did this come together? Absolutely, Jason. Thanks for having me. But um, how did this come together? Basically, you know, this this last these last uh, I say twelve months, I've gotten kind of maybe three or four um, opportunities to put my name in the hat for a short notice fight, um, whether that be the UFC or whatever, you know, um, I've had to say no to all of them. Um, not because I wasn't training because I'm always training. I'm always in the gym, but it was more so weight, weight related, you know, um, whether I can make the weight in two weeks, 10 days, you know, that was never a, a possibility. I walked pretty heavy. Um, so essentially eight weeks ago when I first caught wind of the, uh, Abu Dhabi fights and the fights on fight Island, I didn't know who, I didn't know there was no lineups announced yet. You know, I didn't know who was fighting who. So I, I told myself mentally though, I was like, I bet there's going to be a lot of Bantamweight fights, you know, a lot of Bantamweight fights. And with it being with Corona, um, and it being overseas, there's got to be something that falls through. So I just mentally told myself that, and I mentally like almost pretended like I had a, a secure date for one of these Abu Dhabi fights. Uh, I started training camp started training hard, started my diet. Um, sure enough, two weeks ago, my manager hits me up, maybe three weeks ago, I'm sorry. My manager hits me up and says, hey, can you, you know, can you fight Sean Woodson? Uh, this was in Texas. And I said, yeah, you can put my name in the hat for sure. Uh, they obviously ended up going with the local guy. Um, I think his name is Mike Rosa. Uh, but I put my name on the hat and I said, yes, finally. And that felt good to me. You know what I mean? Being able to finally say yes to a last minute opportunity, you know, cause like I said, I had been training, my, my weight was fine. I could make the 140 or 145, whatever they wanted. And so, um, yeah, basically fast forward a couple more weeks and same process manager, my manager, Jason house says, Hey, are you, you know, there's an opportunity here. Nathaniel Woods opponent is pulling out. Uh, obviously you want me to put your name in the hat. Actually, you know what? He didn't even tell me. He didn't even ask me. He just put my name in the hat because he knew I was training. He knew I was ready. Sure enough, I got the fight and here we are. You know, April of last year was the last time we, we saw you in, in competition there at that one, obviously, uh, in, you know, in combate. So as you think about the last, you know, 14, 15 months, like how, how is there a way you would sum it all up? Um, you know, I, I, I feel like I've ever since that, that combate fight that I, I knew that we had asked for a release from my contract with them um, right after that fight. And we we got it. So to me, mentally, my, my the only thing that I was willing to do next is fight for the UFC. And, you know, I had my opportunities to throw my name in the hat and I made I made waste of them. You know, what I mean, I could have been in, I could have possibly had my name in the hat sooner. Uh, last year or even this year but you know because of my own issues I said I had to say no to all of them but you know I, I feel like I learned I learned a lot from it um, staying ready and um, yeah I, I mean I, I've been training like I said I, I, I don't take time off so I've been growing I've been evolving I've been getting better in all aspects of the game so um, you know I was telling I was telling my manager this too this is my 21st pro fight um, I had 16 amateur fights before this, you know what I mean? This isn't my, my, this isn't the first time I've done this, you know what I mean? So a little bit over a year layoff isn't really, really isn't anything for me. I've had a little bit over a year layoffs before and it doesn't affect me, you know? You know, obviously the MMA industry is at a, I guess, weird point right now. You know, when, when you think about, I mean, you know, the UFC's now doing, been doing shows for two months, but, and, and some other shows are starting to do shows, you know, LFA just started up last week, yep. um, you know, Titans done some shows, but you know, for most case, there's not a, a lot of opportunities out there before this opportunity came where you kind of sitting there going, okay, what is my next step? If the UFC doesn't come call, was that ever in your mindset? Oh, absolutely. Especially, you know, right as, as COVID started hitting, hitting our country, I, that was the first thing on my mind. You know what I mean? I'm like, Oh, great. A couple more months of the waiting game on, on top of the months that I've already sat here waiting, you know? Um, but I super grateful, you know, as soon as I, I, I caught wind of the fight Island fights, like I said, I, I, I knew that there was going to be an opportunity. 
I guess I didn't know it for sure, but I was very hopeful and, and it paid off. You know, here we are, we're, we're ready. We're, we're trained, trained well, and we're going to step in last minute. I remember I was talking to Julian Arroso who ultimately, you know, got the Sean Woodson fight. And of course he got the win. And I said to him, I said, I was like, you know, I, I, it all, you know, we all hate this world that we're in right now with COVID. I said, but you know, he's in a situation where he'd already had two stints in the UFC and, you know, a third stint. He and said, he goes, I knew it was unlikely. He goes, but kind of, he goes, like, I kind of think the COVID era because that gave me an opportunity. Do you, do you in a way feel like this opportunity came quicker because of COVID? Like it, it was probably ultimately going to come, but do you feel like it came a little sooner because of just the UFC has got to find fights? Um, I don't think so, to be honest. So here's the, like I said, before COVID, um, even existed, uh, I had, I had gotten a couple opportunities, you know, to throw my name in the hat. I, I didn't even give the UFC a chance to pick me because I had turned them down, you know? So I knew it was, I knew it was coming. Um, so I'm going to say no on that one. I don't think it was because of COVID, but I will say this, that because of COVID, I feel like I've, I've gotten a lot better, um, a lot better training, a lot, you know, I've been able to, to manipulate my schedule, be, uh, you know, obviously with restrictions, with the gym, um, stuff like that, you know, uh, the first month of COVID, we were shut down completely. Um, the, the gym was the Minnesota Martial Arts Academy. So what did I do? I built my own gym here at home. I bought zebra mats. Um, thanks, Kyle Fisher. And uh, I bought zebra mats. I had two training partners come to my house every single day and we were getting one on ones. You know, I was going with some good guys then getting beat up every day. So I never stopped training. And then sure enough, a month later, um, our coach let us use the academy, the Minnesota Martial Arts Academy, um, in small group training. You know, uh, So we were, I was able to get in there with um, a couple more people, but still small enough to keep everyone safe. And at that point, it's like you have four of the – I mean, for me anyways, personally, it was four of my, my best training partners, good jiu-jitsu guys, good strikers, and then my coach watching over us, all coaches watching over us, personally, you know what I mean? It, it, it made everything so much better. Um, Greg Nelson to be able to focus a little bit more individually on us. Um, I think it's definitely evolved my game and the guys that I'm, I've been training with, you know, they're all killers and we've been putting in some serious work. So I'm, I'm more than ready. One of the words I've heard fighters use about um, this COVID life in terms of, um, you know, their fight game is evaluate that it's offered them more time to evaluate all aspects of fighting, whether it's, you know, your own abilities or, or maybe it's just allowed you to sit there and, and watch fighters that maybe you normally wouldn't watch if you're prepping for a fight. Is there something about this whole period that has, that did open your eyes up to anything? Um, you know, I, I, I think more so to an extent, yes. Like you were saying, um, when, before COVID, you don't have the, you don't have as much time as you, as you do during these quarantine times. And, you know, everything's closed up. You don't, you know, you're not going out, you're not hanging out at bars and restaurants and stuff like that. So yeah, of course you are able to focus more on, on yourself and your own passions. And obviously a true martial artist, you know, I'm, I'm watching, you know, I, I, I've, I've caught myself, me and my wife are in the, are obviously big jujitsu guys. So we, you know, we watch a lot more jujitsu now during quarantine. Like I've watched more jujitsu this past quarantine than I have in my whole life. You know what I mean? So it's definitely helped on that aspect, like a mental aspect of learning via different ways. But I wouldn't say specifically I've been focusing on, you know, this fighter or this fighter, but absolutely. You know, I, I've had more time to myself and more time to kind of do the things that I've never had time to do before. Was Nathaniel Wood on your radar before getting the call for this? Not one bit. You know, I, I, I've, I've obviously I've heard of Nathaniel Wood, you know, he's a good guy. He's three and one in the UFC. Um, he's a tough guy, but very beatable, you know, um, the more he was not on my radar to answer your question. Um, as soon as I got the opportunity though, and, and I, the thought of possibly fighting him, obviously then he was on my radar and I, you know, I did all the research I could, but you know, this guy's good. He's, he's a good guy. He's fast. He's a good 35 er. I think he's got some holes and I think I got some strengths over him. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a good fight. Absolutely. You're going to see the best, the best John for sure.
what do you believe your if there's one thing you had to outline as a key to victory what would that be I know I say this every fight and I know every fighter says this every fight but Jason I've been I've been working on my my stand up and my my pressure uh, my stand up and my pressure a lot you know I know I can I know I can compete with this guy on the feet but I think where where I really think I have the advantages on the ground you know I I've seen he's got a couple submissions in the UFC um against some very I don't know like the guys that I I watched those fights and I was just thinking like these guys really aren't that strong or solid on the ground you know what I mean like the he 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 almost like used his his size but I don't even think he's a big 35er you know what I mean I think I'm I'm, I'm bigger than him um, I think I'm definitely more explosive than than those first three submission wins that he has. More explosive, uh, I move more. I have better transitions on the ground. You know, I think the advantage is going to be on the ground in my wrestling and my jujitsu for sure. Obviously, it's a, a unique fight week. Uh, it'll be when you you know you take that the, the charter flight over uh, over to Abu Dhabi, and of course everything that just that will go a part of fight week. Um, I, I was watching Rob Fon, who's a part of, of Calvin Cater's team for, and he was, it, it was an early morning IG post and it, it had to be like five, six o'clock in the morning. And they were like, man, just sweating through clothes, just being outside said, man, weight cuts going to be easy for this one. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> but, but it serves like, as you think about like what fight week is going to be like, and, uh, obviously there's a quarantine aspect of, of once you get there and, what do you yep. think is going to be the biggest challenge during fight week for you? Um, I mean, you said it, just the quarantining, you know what I mean? But here's the thing is that we're able, my guys are flying with me, you know what I mean? So I'm going to have my, my training partners in my room. I don't care where I get my workouts in, you know, everything's going to be the same. I'll be able to work out in my room. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in my, in, in my hotel room, but I, otherwise nothing else changes. You know what I mean? I'm still going to be able to get my workouts in, get my, my nutrition in, you know, anything that I'm able to do regularly, it's just three days, you know, one day in Vegas and two in Abu Dhabi. So other than that, I'll be able to kind of go about my normal routine when it comes to, to fight week. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I don't know if I could do the hotel quarantine thing. That would be the thing I think that would, because I, I feel like, especially when you're in that 48 hour quarantine in Abu Dhabi, like you're going to be counting down the hours. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I, no, I, I can't imagine. I've, I've obviously never been a part of something like this either, but I'm, I'm excited to see how it plays out. You know what I mean? It's, it's going to be worth it, obviously, going to Abu Dhabi. So we'll, we'll make it happen. In terms of, obviously, when you're fighting, it'll be very early in the morning, you know, depending on where your place on the card is. I mean, obviously, for the pay-per-view, the fight started, um, the prelims fight started 2 a.m. local time, and, and main card didn't start till, till 6 a.m. local time. Will you stay? Will you try to keep your body on U.S. time? No, you know what's funny is that I actually have like a, um, I have a really weird sleep schedule right now, um, to where I'm up. I'm like basically on opposite schedule. I'm on Abu Dhabi schedule, but I'm in Central Time right now. Um, like I sleep until 3 p.m. here. You know what I mean? And I've been doing that because of pre-COVID. You know, my my part-time job that's the schedule that I require. And I kind of just never broke the cycle. It's kind of hard to break the cycle. And so I'm actually right. I'm right there. You know what I mean? I'm like still wide awake and, and everything, um, come two, 3 AM, you know what I mean? So it's just, it's going to be a couple hour difference, but not as drastic as some of these other people. You know what I mean? See, I think that becomes like a very interesting factor for the yeah. United States based fighters, as opposed to, you know, saving your opponent, a European based fighter, that time difference of kind of uh, how do you, you know, how do you get that together? I mean, is it, is that something you've ever had to deal with in your fighting career? Never, you know, I've never been in a, on a different time zone to where it would make a big difference like that. You know, it's always been just a few hours. Um, I've never fought out of the country. You know, I fought out of Mexico. I fought in Mexico, but Mexico is very relative to our time here in central, central Minnesota. So, um, yeah, no, this is definitely, like I said, it's going to be a little different, but it's nothing that I'm not um, too worried about just because of my current sleep schedule and schedule right now. So, Final thing, uh, of course, you're fighting in essentially an empty arena. I knew they do have you know, very small amount of people inside the building. But, you know, I think one of the things that that we think about when we think about this quarantine life fighting of of empty arenas is 
how much you can hear. Um, you know, and I, I want to say it was, it was Mike Perry who had talked about, he started to kind of figure out his opponent's corner and what they were calling for. He said, I want to say, he said he figured out about the third round of what they were calling for. Like, have you thought about that aspect of, of how that makes this fight unique of, of just, you're going to be able to hear so many different things. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, keep in mind, I just did this three years ago. You know, the, the contender series is that like I could, I remember that perfectly, like how I could hear, I could hear my corners perfectly. I could hear the stuff that they were saying. You know what I mean? I even at one point remember I was thinking about this not too long ago. I wanted to like respond. I remember thinking in my fight, my contender series fight, wanting to respond to something that they were saying. Like, I forget what it was, you know, oh, he's tired. He's tired. I wanted to like literally look over there and be like, I'm not tired. Stop saying that, you know? So it's, I, I, I've been there before. Um, it's, it's, it is what it is. You know what I mean? It doesn't affect me. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a veteran of this sport. I've, I've had over 30 fights, so this is, this is not going to be nothing new to me. And of course this fight all goes down here on here in the United States, July the 25th, July the 26th over in Abu Dhabi. John, man, as always appreciate time, uh, safe travels uh, to Vegas, then to Abu Dhabi. Uh, of course, let me know anything you on social media, anything else you want to mention? That's going to be it. I just obviously thanking my my teammates, my coaches, everybody at the Minnesota Martial Arts Academy, and obviously my my manager who got me this opportunity. I'm ready to uh, pounce and make the most of it.